What's going on, YouTube? Well, uh, I had a video here I want to make with y'all, share with you guys tonight on a product I just received uh, in the mail. Um, we've had uh, done some review. I actually stumbled upon this product uh, just by surfing YouTube, and there's not very many videos out there. There is a couple of them out there about this uh, product, which is called Blazing Tech. Um, and uh, from what I've seen uh, through the videos, uh, looks like it's something that um, really can uh, benefit an AR owner. Um, but anyways, before I get into that, I'd like to say first of all, thank you to everybody who watched uh, the last two videos I made. Um, if you haven't got an opportunity to watch them, I'm going to put the uh, name of the two videos down in the description below. So uh, I think you should check them out, you know. the you know, for me, hitting 200 subscribers, uh, like, it was a big deal for me. And so, for the people who haven't uh, saw the videos I did, uh, I, I took out all of my, basically what it is, I took out all of my AR-15s, and I took about a thousand rounds, of maybe a little bit more of ammunition, and shot them, and had some fun, and did a video. So, if you'd like to check it out, like I said, just check out in the description before. Also, uh, I did a video the day before that. Which, uh, if you really want to know a little bit more about the ins and outs, more specifics of each gun and the ammo and the magazines, I did a video on there also. But anyway, so like I said, I'd just like to say thank you guys to everything, uh, to everybody who subscribed, to everybody who shared my videos. Uh, it was a really big success. It was a lot of work, but hey, it was worth it. But anyway, just getting on with the video. Uh, this product, like I said, it, it's something that uh, I believe uh, every AR owner should use. Uh, when it comes to uh, cleaning your gun. It's going to make uh, cleaning your gun so much easier than it is today. And uh, so let's get right into the video, check it out, see what it's all about. Uh, I just received it, oh excuse me, I just received it no more than an hour ago in the mail. So uh, really excited about checking it out. Um, and so I'll go ahead and pause it, reposition the camera, and uh, we'll be right back. Alright, so here we are. Um, now what I've got here is uh, yesterday uh, when I got home, um, you know, like I said, if you've watched my videos in the past, I don't like to keep my ARs uh, dirty. I like to clean them, or any of my guns, I should say. Um, but, you know, I had eight of them. And uh, so what I did was... is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean two per day, because um, like I said, I really go into detail, I uh, try to at least, and to cleaning them. So what I did was, is I knew this was coming in sometime this week, I didn't know it would be in today, I figured it would be in tomorrow. But anyways, uh, so what I did was, uh, yesterday I cleaned two of my ARs. I cleaned my, uh, the one that I built, and my Bushmaster conventional style and I'll tell you like I said I, I took some time on cleaning it, it, it you know takes some time uh, which is fine with me um, but and, and cleaning the chamber is definitely one of the hardest parts to get to due to the fact that you're restricted you know plus the, the, the uh, dust cover open but you're really you know you can really only come through here uh, you can only really come through you know through here here and it's even then limited to what you can do uh, in getting in there and really getting into the chamber and around the lugs, uh, you know, the lugs and everything. And so, but if you take your time and you take a lot of painstaking stuff to do it, you can do it. Now, like what I did was yesterday, uh, bought some of these little picks here. Um, they're different, different sizes as far as shapes. And uh, for you, like what I did yesterday is I just went ahead and took some of these, took some patches and Q-tips, and I just really got it and, and tried to get in there the best I could. Now, what I did was, and this is the one that I cleaned conventional yesterday, and here it is, this is the one we're going to do today. Now, this is my Daniel Defense Mark 12, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to clean this one, and what I want to do, the reason I've got this one out, is I want to check, and because I'm going to run this brush through here, and with the with the I'll show you what comes in in a second and see if there's still a bunch of gunk in it. So, anyways, let's get to the product. This is it right here. This is called Blazing Tech. Uh, like I said, I just stumbled upon this uh, by accident, and from what I've seen with the limited videos out there, 
Um, it looked pretty awesome. Uh, you can go to their website, blazingtech.com, or, you know, like you can go to, I got this actually from Amazon. So let's take a look at the at inside of it and see what it comes, what comes in it. Uh, and uh, then after that, we'll get into actually getting, cleaning the system. So open it up. All right, here we go. I'll zoom in just a little bit for so you guys can kind of see what's going on in the package. All right, so, all right, so here it is. Um, here's the unit. This is it right here. It is a little motorized. Actually, I think it's called the motorized weapon motorized. Uh, oh, let's see, Blazing Tech weapon I a uh, motorized weapon cleaner. That's what it is. Sorry, I got tongue twisted for a second. That's what it's called, and it's it's very light. Very, very light. Uh, it's got its own little logo right here. It says Blazing Tech on it. Uh, it does have a light. Well, first of all, I guess it should put the battery in. It comes with a 9 volt battery, which is what it takes. So let's go ahead and insert that real quick. Uh, make sure I get it in there correctly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think that's it right there. Okay. Anyways, it has a little light right here, which is cool. So when you're cleaning the chamber you've got a little light that's cool and then the button right here which turns it on um, it also comes because this can clean both rifles and handguns so it's got a little uh, an extension on it so like if you want to clean your handguns you can uh, and then it comes with four chamber brushes it comes with a uh, nine millimeter uh, brush comes with a 45 ACP brush then I, the one that I think is probably obviously going to get the most use at least for this week it's the uh, it says now it says 556 chamber brush but I imagine it would still work uh, in a, if you had a rifle that just you know shot 223 um, I, I gotta assume it would fit down there you know it's nylon material and then last but not least 762 Millimeter, so you know, 308, you know, uh, AK, so on and so forth. Uh, next, it's got uh, what they call socks, brush socks that go over the socks. So, what the way it'll work is you'll uh, you'll clean it, uh, I'll show you, and then afterwards to polish it and stuff, you'll put these over them. So it's got the nine millimeter and the 45 ACP, and then the 556 five, and the 762. Uh, comes with a card that talks about the warranty and their return policy and then here comes there here's the instruction on how they recommend you use this and then it comes with uh, frog loop which if you've seen my videos you know I'm a big proponent of frog loop so that's definitely a a thumbs up right here it's got the CLP and the solvent so we'll be definitely using these tonight um, and then it comes with a little strap, I guess, if you want to put it on there. And the carrying case. Carrying case is pretty nice. It's really foam padded. Really nice, little sturdy little case. So, anyways, well, let's get it. Let's get it out, and uh, obviously get the brush that we're going to be using, which is the AR brush. And uh, just get it. Put it on there. We'll go ahead and get the rest of this out of the way. Now. I brought out my AR cleaning kit to show you the differences between this brush and the a normal brush that you would get in your cleaning kit. Which I must I've got to assume obviously when they put these kits together, I'm not saying that these are bad. Um, but I don't know if these when they make these brushes, you know, it looks like it's got a little aluminum, it's real soft, it's not real I I wouldn't call it steel wool, but it's it's definitely not uh, you know plastic or whatever um, and then you got looks like brass bristle brushes but anyways but this brush it looks like it's made out of, like out of nylon basically you can probably definitely get the same uh, cleaning power as you can out of this without scratching uh, your chamber up so uh, we're gonna try it here in, in here in a little bit but there's a difference there uh, between the two so what you'll do is you'll screw this on right here, like this. All right. Then you'll turn it on, and it kind of turns on with a little button back here, 
And it almost sounds like, I've heard this, it almost sounds like if you're going to the dentist. It's kind of a little bit eerie. If you're, if you're leery about going to the dentist, you may, you may cringe when you hear this. But this is how it sounds. Just like that. All right, so how it, what it recommends you do is first, there's a couple of steps that it recommends you do first. First step is to just go ahead and run the brush into the chamber with no CLP, no solvent, no nothing, dry first. I guess it would just break up the initial carbon and dirt and junk that's in there. And then after that, we're going to take it out. We're going to put one of these socks on them spray some solvent on there and do it again, do it again, and, and do repeat the process a few times. And what and then what we'll do, like I said, is we'll we'll check it after I get done with this, we'll check it against the one I did conventionally and see if there's a big difference. So first of all, let's take a look inside the chamber here. And uh, I don't know if the camera is it can pick it up, but there's definitely I wrap my finger right through there. You know bunch of black carbon obviously you know hasn't been cleaned so it's definitely I don't want people thinking that maybe you know I just didn't you know been grabbing a clean clean chamber but this is uh, pretty dirty so we're gonna go ahead and do exactly as the instruction says so let me I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in bring it in a little bit that way you guys can see as close as I can get it all right so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the little light on that's on here and I'm going to go insert this right through here. It fits perfect. Now, I guess it actually says you should insert it through the, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, not through the uh, dust cover, but right through the bottom. And just turn it on and go for it. So here we go. Uh, here we go. Well, one thing I noticed right off bat is that it's not it's not bogging down it's, you know in there and it's pretty cool to have this see if I can get the camera to show it a little bit but up oh, this way and just getting after it all right Take a look inside there now. See what it looks like. Well, yeah, there we are. All right. So, it already just from visualizing. Uh, let me go ahead and zoom out. It looks uh, already looks clean, but I'm gonna go ahead and run it again before I put the uh, little sock on here. Now you can do this with a drill, your cordless drill, which I think it would work just fine. Um, but the thing is, you know, you gotta come in through the back and uh, I just don't like marring up the inside. I feel like if you do that, you could possibly mar up your uh, inside of your receiver and I don't wanna do that. So this definitely, in my opinion, is a better way of doing it. Now, what I'm going to do initially is, uh, I've also got here. I didn't know if I showed you this at the beginning of the video. This is just my own personal preference. I got a can of that compressed air, or that compressed, but air in a can that people use for computers. Um, and I'm going to use this to kind of spray it out a little bit. So, all right. So, I'm going to take a look on the inside here real quick. Man, it already uh, looks pretty clean. Now, I haven't even, uh, haven't even used the CLP or anything on it, or solvent. This is just the uh, brush by itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a brush on, or put a sock on the brush. And then we're going to go ahead and run some solvent through here and uh, it says to do it again with the solvent for another couple of minutes. So while I'm doing this, I wanted to give you guys an update. Uh, I did some further re uh, research 
on those issues I talked about at the end of my video yesterday and found out some pretty interesting things. So, the first thing I wanted to do, if you remember me talking about, and I showed on the video where there was one when I went to go shoot it, that the, uh, I've got this, I'm going to put the solvent on here, frog loop solvent. Uh, anyways, um, that uh, I had a round, an actual live round that jammed uh, up into, uh, up in between my uh, bolt and the receiver. And I had never seen that before. Alright, and I was able to get it out. Wow, well, look at that. Look at that. Just take, a, take it off real quick. I think you guys can see it though. Oh, that looks... It's pretty nasty. Alright. Anyways, I'm going to do it again a few more times. Uh, so... And like I said, when I got home, and I, at the end of my video, I put some comments on there of anybody who's ever seen that. Well, I went ahead and did my own research again. Like I said, YouTube is just an awesome tool to have. So anyways, I, I looked up YouTube and stuff, and come to find out, I found exactly there's actual name for what happened and uh, what causes it, and so on and so forth. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. What that is called, or what happened, it's called... Um, bolt override and uh, what bolt override actually is it's when the either the the spent casing or live round which was in my case gets wedged between the bolt and the upper receiver which like I said is what happened yesterday uh, to me so then my next question is now that I know what it is what it's called what causes it? And uh, what, it's, what it says is, is when, the, uh, when the round doesn't seat on the bolt face and gets wedged between the chamber and the upper receiver and the bolt. So, basically, when the round does not get, you know, seated properly in the, uh, on the bolt when it, when it uh, comes up through the uh, magazine, that's what happens and it gets wedged in between there and so how do you fix it would be the next question because now I was able to fix it myself and I guess this is more of a common occurrence than I expect because I've uh, saw I found several videos on YouTube on how to correct the issue Alright, well, I'm running this now dry with just a few socks on here. And I'm uh, going to run this just like I do anything else. I'm going to run it until these uh, patches uh, come out clean. And then it says to go ahead and repeat the process one more time. So, I'm going to do that. So, anyways, getting back to what I was talking about. It's... Um, so basically how you're supposed to fix it, you know, because you really can't, you know, your bolt is stuck, basically. You cannot, you cannot use the forward assist or anything, it's just not going to work. And so the way you can fix it, there's several reasons, several ways you can fix it. But the most common way, I'm pretty satisfied with that, so I'm actually going to run some CLP through here and, and do the process one more time. Um, anyways, as far as uh, fixing the problem with it, it's uh, you can you know use a pin or a, you know a loose round or your pocket knife or something to that effect to try to get it to uh, to, to come free. Or there's actually a tool I haven't now I haven't searched this, but this is what it said. You can use a thing, look at that, look at all that, still. You can use a tool called a MUT, M-U-T tool. Now, I don't know what that is. Maybe if somebody knows what that is, they can uh, put it down in the description for me, and so then I'll know. So, and but anyways, so I was really surprised that uh, I was able to find what it, what it was uh, on the internet. So, all right.
getting back to the video. All right. So now, as I'm looking inside the chamber, it definitely looks clean, but I'll be honest with you, it looks like that there's still some areas down below that it's still not getting to. And I'm going to see if I'm right or wrong. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick a toothpick in here and see if, there, if it comes out clean. There's like a real small area down in the very bottom. Turn that light off that it looks like it's not getting into. Let's see here. Yep. Take a look at the Q-tip. It's got carbon on it. There's a very small, minute area, the very bottom of where, where the uh, feed ramps are before it goes into the actual chamber. Uh, very small area where brass shavings and carbon can definitely hide I guess you could say you know cuz see look there's still some carbon on that um, that it seems like not even with this brush uh, will get so what I'm going to do alright well can I get this thing to come off oh. uh, well did I uh, Put it on so tight to where it doesn't want to come off. Oh, there we go. I'm actually going to stick my regular chamber brush in here, on here, and see if I can get it to uh, maybe get those little pieces out. Well, maybe I'm not. I guess there's. they made it to where you can't uh, use nothing but their own stuff. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Okay, pretty smart, actually. You know, so... Guess you got to use their own stuff. Oh well. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, put this back on. And let's hit it again. I want to give it. I don't want to, you know, say it's not worthy. Uh, let's go ahead and run it a little bit more. Get it. Get really working in there. All right, well, anyway, so, yeah, so that's what I was found out was pretty interesting. At least I know now that what happened, it's not, it, was just an, it wasn't just an isolated incident, so to speak. It's actually something that has, that is, is I wouldn't say it's a common occurrence, but it does happen. And with that being said, you know, at least I was able to figure out a way to get it fixed. Um, it doesn't seem that there's really any way to prevent it so to speak um, but you know if it happens but at least we know what at least I know now what it is what you know what ha what it's called and uh, how to get it how to how to uh, how to fix it so also yesterday real quick uh, if you also watched my video, you'll, you'll know also I talked about, there was a, it was actually my Bushmaster, as a matter of fact, I'm glad I brought the Bushmaster out, where um, towards the last, the end of the video, I was firing and I thought maybe the Bushmaster had enough and it didn't want to use, it didn't want to fire anything, and then I think I told you that I found a piece that was actually cut off, like, it's, like it was sheared off, but not like it was pinched off, but it was just sheared off. Well, come to find out, when I was actually cleaning my Bushmaster yesterday, um, I was running the chamber brush through there, and it went through fine. But then when I went to, uh, come on now, machine, get in there. Uh, it got it, pretty much. All right, uh, anyways... Not, I don't want to get too far off, but uh, when I went to stick the chamber brush to clean the chamber out, uh, it got kind of stuck, but when I pulled, this came out. Look at this. Now look, this, is the, this actual piece of casing was stuck in the chamber where, if you can, if you can think about it, you know, you got about, about this much, oops, about this much of it I told you was snapped off when I, when I found it inside my gun. And so if you can imagine this much, so literally, for some way, I have to say this is a manufacturer defect. And I'll try to see if the camera will focus in. 
it's not jagged. It's like it was just literally sheared off with like I don't know a plasma cut or something. It's just a clean break. But that I this was stuck inside my chamber when I got home and I went to clean it. I pulled out the chamber brush and this came out with it. So uh, wow, that was amazing. That was crazy. I'd never seen that before. But anyways, enough said. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my air. And now I'm gonna take uh, the light. I'm gonna look inside here. Oh yeah, much, much better. Now I'm gonna eventually, oops, sorry. Much, much better. But what I'm gonna eventually do is I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna actually polish my feed ramps and I'll have a video on that because it's a very uh, tedious process and it, you need to be very careful when you do it. All right, so now let's uh, run my finger through here real quick. And now it's nothing. Now let's see if the camera will pick up on it and how nice and clean it is. Also, let's get it up this way. Let's see if we can get a better view. All right, so there's the inside. And then here are the feed ramps. Nice and clean. Like I said, you can put your finger through there. Comes out clean. All right. So now the last step it says to do, which I'm not going to do it now because I haven't cleaned this gun. I'm not going to clean it on camera. I'll do it off because I still got to clean my uh, the, the inside of the receiver and I also got to clean the, uh, the bore. Um, so, but anyways, what I want to do is I want to check the Bushmaster on, you know, even though, like I said, I believe I do a really good job on cleaning my ARs, I want to see how clean I got it in comparison to using this, uh, this Blazing Tech and see if it was worth, you know, basically, now this, this runs $140 for the kit. Um, to be honest with you, there was there's not very many places that carry it. Like I said, I was very now Amazon. I found it on Amazon, but it's actually Blazing Tech. The company uses Amazon, so uh, I think I did see maybe there was something on eBay. Somebody personally was selling it for cheaper, but I think it might have been used. So basically, the only way you're going to really get this is through Blazing Tech, and. Uh, so it's 140 bucks. So we're gonna see if it was worth the 140 bucks because, like I said, now I'm going to. This is the one I cleaned last night conventionally, and we're gonna see if I can get any carbon to come out of this. Uh, I'm just gonna keep working it. I will say that the motor does not bog down, so to speak. But I mean, if you really, really push hard on it, it's gonna slow down a little bit, but it doesn't even stall out. So. This little thing, it's got some power to it. Alright. I want to give this a fair deal, so that's why I'm really taking my time with this. And see what it comes out like. Alright, here's the moment of truth. Well, look at this, folks. Well, look at the sock. It's definitely got carbon on it. So, that tells me that... This was a worthwhile investment because even though I, like I said, I probably meticulously spent at least an hour on the gun uh, cleaning it, and uh, I thought, you know, I mean, I mean, when I say I cleaned it, you know, I, you know, I did the Q-tips and I took these little picks things like I was telling you about, and you know, really got in there with my patches and uh, solvent, and uh, really just kind of went to town on it. And the, like I said, that and the bolt. Now, I mean, I clean all, I cleaned the whole gun really well, but those two pieces right there are the ones where I really am going to just spend the extra time on cleaning because <clears throat> I know that those are going to be if I'm going to have any failures with this gun, that's where it's going to be in those two areas. So I definitely take my time. But even with that, as you saw on that last one, uh, it's still there was still carbon in there. So. You know, I, I, in a way, I'm kind of glad it is because it goes to show me that this is, was a good wire. This is not just some gimmick. This product, this is not just something somebody made up to make a big some bucks. This actually works, 
and it seems to be the only one as far as I'm concerned and far as I know this is the only one of its kind on the market today oh yeah it's definitely got some uh, I'm gonna spray some COP on here one more time it's kind of interesting that you know I mean I didn't do what I call the white glove test uh, but uh, I, you know the best I could I, I you know I wet my finger through the chamber and other places on this gun last night and it seemed to have come out but obviously finger cannot get into certain areas and q-tips cannot get when you can't reach it all right all right one more time all right let's take it off and see what it looks like well it uh is definitely now I will say this if you take a look most of the carbon the bottom the chamber itself it seems to be pretty clean because obviously it's not very hard to get it's that distance between the lugs and the chamber that little gap there I'd say an eighth quarter of an inch section where you get all that build up that it's hard to get in and that's where all the carbon is seems to be on this so uh, let me uh, I want to make sure that I run this because uh, I want to do this this justice I want to run this one more time and uh, actually two more times I'm going to run it one more time with the CLP and then I'll run it one more time dry and uh, we'll take a look at the, the stuff after uh, we get done with it so anyways uh, trying to figure out what to say Maybe I should shut up. I don't know. I get some people that tell me that I, I talk too much on my videos. Uh, I try not to just, you know, I like I said before, I like to, when I'm watching a video, if the video is an hour long, I really don't care if it's an hour long. If the video is a really good quality video and the video is being uh, the product or whatever the case may be, uh, is really being talked about, you know, so... The more information, the better. Well, now this this sock here, pretty much is almost clean. Even the section around that section of area I was telling you about above the chamber. Okay. Well, I'm gonna actually just spray it off with some air. And now let's uh take a look let me uh, take a look real quick myself oh yeah all right now we'll do a close-up on the uh, camera shot let's go ahead and open the dust cover all right so here we go so there it is like I said it's clean but this is more important it's here is here are the brush, here are the socks that I ran through the AR after I, like I said I meticulously, in my opinion, cleaned it yesterday. So there was definitely still carbon in there. So that being said, Blazing Tech is definitely a worthwhile investment. Uh, it's uh like I said, I was hoping that when I got this. Let's go ahead and get up here, folks. There we go. All right. When I got this, I was hoping that it wasn't just, you know, some hype because, you know, there's tons of stuff out there uh, on the a uh, on the market for, you know, ARs. But uh, I love it, you know. Um, Want to keep my ARs running is tip-top shape. You know, failures will happen. Um, but uh, if I can eliminate them the best I can by having the best products to clean my guns and to have my guns years from now running as if they did, you know, from the day I bought them, like, you know, with the Bushmaster here, uh, it, relatively speaking, it's not that old, but still, I, it's five years old, and God knows how many thousands of rounds have gone through it, and it still performs flawlessly only due to the fact that uh, I clean them and I take care of the guns. Uh, so, one more thing I forgot, I was going to tell you, I didn't want to make another video about this, um, 
If you also know, I was talking about those IMI mags. Now I did some stuff looking on those, and it looks like that uh, there's a, those are those uh, which I thought was the springs that were you know maybe kind of crimped up inside there was what it was. What it comes to seem to be like when you take the mag, the spring, and you take it apart, you take it apart against any other conventional mag like a P mag or whatever. The IMI mag is almost four inches longer, so you have means you have more compression. Uh, when you actually compress it and put it in there and so it's so much tighter so when you try sometimes when you try to uh, depending on between you know you got you got the feeder here and you've got your uh, uh, buffer tube and buffer spring trying to push it when you try to chamber around it, there, there's so much pressure pushed up against it that it's not enough to the buffer spring to actually chamber it into the uh, into the uh, into the rifle uh, so it seems that it's not really so much the mag as it is that the mag, I mean, malfunction of the mag is that it seems like in some guns it does not want to feed due to the tension, so much compression on the spring. But what I am going to do is, the, uh, I was going to do this anyways, and I'm going to show you how to maintain your mags is what I'm going to do. And I'll just highlight, I'm going to use a bunch of mags, but I'm going to highlight the IMI mag too, and then we'll go out and shoot them and show you how they run after you uh, do this uh protective coating on them anyways uh man thank you guys it's awesome to i feel like i'm getting really more comfortable with these videos i definitely uh i need to start i'm going to start start enough for another channel because to be honest with you folks uh to all my my gun loving folks out here who subscribe to my channel thanks i mean that's we have we share a passion but i also like to do other things you know and uh I'm going to start another channel eventually and swap all my videos from here onto that uh, that is not gun related or you know whatever uh, and because there's other stuff I like to do you know cooking and just you know just lots of stuff and because I'm starting to really get comfortable with this and I really want to take off with it but uh, my first love is definitely my my uh, my guns well until next time people thank you once again uh, keep uh, liking and subscribing tell your friends i've got more cool cool stuff coming up in the future more gun shootings uh we'll have product reviews uh it's just got a lot of good stuff coming up uh so with that being said peace out